sweet victory for Nigerian team. That is Golden Eaglet of Nigeria. They did well by defeating Togo 3-1 yesterday at the Cape Coast uh, where they played our game in Ghana. The team has been fantastic so far. They've won two games out of two. And right now, the young lads are really riding the course. Uh, right? They're happy for Nigerians. A good one for the team, the Golden Eaglet. Welcome you on the show, 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adeni Ajishafe. We just have to look at the fact that these guys have been fantastic. The under 21, they did, and now we have the under 17 actually rolling home, and they are really doing so well, defeating Togo 3-1, and now the teams are really rearing to go, as we'll be talking concerning that particular uh, team uh, this morning. Joining me on the show is uh, Ibrahim Indala, ex-international. Good to have you, Ibrahim. Good to have you, Rod. And also, I have a far uh, left-hand side is Charles Ohaji. Good to have you, Charles. Yes, thank you, Adini. Good one there. We'll be looking at uh, the Golden Eaglet. Uh, that's our first story. But before we actually be... Yes, uh, that Golden Eaglet defeat Togo to qualify for semi-final. Well, good one there. A lot of Nigerians were waiting for these boys to do it, and they did it convincingly. Now, they will be playing in the uh, semi-final, and we hope that they'll be able to win that particular game. Well, we'll be, joined, we'll be having... Uh, the team coordinator from Ghana, that is uh, Belo Guso, will be talking to us concerning how the performance has been so far, the preparation, the performance, all the expectations they've been meeting for Nigeria. So we have, we'll have, be waiting to have that particular link with Belo Guso, the team coordinator of Golden Eaglet from Cape Coast, Ghana. While we are waiting to link up with him, let's uh, talk some football in the studio. Well, uh, Ibrahim Mundala, you were there before as an ex-international. We played the, uh, all this uh, age grade football. Uh, now, yesterday, our boys did well. They were able to win that game 3-1 against Ghana, 4-2. Wow. It's fantastic mm. at this moment we are in. Mm due to the circumstances of the COVID-19 of the last uh, under-17. And looking at the short period, these boys were assembled, I think, kudos to them and the technical team. Mm. Okay, now, uh, for the fact that even before they went for the tournament, Ubade was a bit scared there because this, most of these boys are very young. They have never been to a, a very large uh, uh, crowd stadium like that one they are playing right now. But seriously, the boys have been fantastic. They've uh, actually obeyed the rules and regulations of playing the football and they've been doing so well. Charles, 4 2, 3 1. Six goals in two matches for under 17. Yes, thank you, Adini. Adini, um, football is one language anywhere all over the world. Football speaks only one language. And what's the language uh, football speaks? It's on the pitch mm. of play. If you are fit, if you are fit, you are skillful, you are determined, your plan, it will show on the field of play. It will definitely prove yourself, no matter the crowd that is there, it will show that you are good. If you are not good, you are not good. Mm. So for me, football is one language. This boy, as I said earlier, these boys have, have prepared well, they are skillful, they are talented, they are good, they, they are hungry. They want to make impact for them, they want to make a name for themselves, they want to create a living for themselves, and also, of course, making it for Nigerians. And you can see on the field of play, and they are disciplined. Without discipline, there's going to be a lot of issues. Discipline is first of the one watchword that, that makes a team excel. And they've been disciplined enough, they've relaxed themselves, and they have sort of little mistakes they make. But those of you know that they are kids, still learning. But apart from that, these boys are good, and I believe they will deliver for Nigeria. Okay, we've been talking concerning the Golden Eaglets. They did well, winning 3-1 after winning against Ghana 4-2, the host nation over there in Cape Coast. And this means uh, the boys are really raring to go. They want to make sure uh, they do well in this competition. Well, now let's, let's see if uh, our guests, uh, well, the virtual... Okay, now we're still waiting to link up with Belo Guso. Now, quickly, let's uh, continue to talk about this. Undala. Uh, like I said, you were there, you played, you have the experience uh, for uh, this under 20, under 70, under 23. Uh, quickly, just take us uh, through the journey of your football career, briefly. Wow, oh. oh, I did, that will be like serious. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I did. My football journey started just like every other kid. Hmm. From the street to the school, from school to the under 17, the journey to the under 17 was tough, you know? When you look at how many young Nigerians are available fighting to have a sport to make it to the World Cup, I pray majority of these boys will remain 
and go with the team to the World Cup because that's when the journey will start. When you play under 17, as at that time, that, what, what year was that? 2001. 2001. Okay, can you mention some of your teammates? Yeah, a lot. Almost all, in short. Oh, uh, yeah, let's have that. <laughs> and glory to God, we are all alive, except uh, for, for our late coach, mm. from the captain, Suleiman Mohamed, myself, Indala Ibrahim, Ima Baba, Joseph Eimofe, Kennedy Chungo, Femi Opabumi. Femi Opabumi was in Richard, that squad, I remember Rich, now. Richard Eremogwe, mm. Temile, Omonigo, Karim Shaibu, Victor Brown, Basi Yakman, Soga Sambo, Ari Uilui, Kazim Babatundi. You still remember uh, most of the Siri, entire Siri, squad? Siri Gun. I remember the entire squad, both the team doctors, everybody, because we stay. You guys still so, relate? So many, so many months together. Okay, you guys at least still, still communicate uh, Yeah, together. we still communicate. We have a platform where we talk to each other every day. After under 17, you moved to? We moved to under 20. Majority of us moved to the under 20, but unfortunately, we, we couldn't qualify due to some administrative issue that affected the team. Okay, after the under 20, did you move also? At least some of you moved from 17 to 20, 20 yeah, to... About, about Six, six to four of us moved to under 23 then. Mm. Uh, Do you remember yeah, them? Yeah, I remember Obabumi, Eimofe, Kennedy Chimu, and uh, who, who else again? I think that's all. Oh, okay, oh yes, three of us moved to under 23. Then, and under and 23 to under Eagles. 23, to Eagles, then to Eagles, I didn't make the journey right to the Japan Korea team because that was when I myself and uh, Eimofe and uh, Obabumi were invited. Mm. But we got dropped along the way in Ottawa. But you were invited, we were invited to the invited, Eagles. Yes, then Obabumi made the team to the World Cup. Then yeah, that's after, a, after Korea that, Japan 2002, yes. right? Then after, yes, Korea Japan 2002. Then after that, uh, I continued my football. I went to Maccabi Tel Aviv and so you Actually, play in Maccabi Tel Aviv in Israel. in Israel. Were you with Aik Beni then or Dereba? No, no, I'm not with Aik Beni. Then. Yes, they're gone before you uh, go yeah, there. Yeah. So it, the season is going to Postport, I think. That was the season that you got to Maccabi. I got to Maccabi. Good one there. We've been talking with Ibrahim Undala, ex international. He played the under 17, under 20, also moved to under 23. Also, uh, he was invited for the Eagles, well, the camp before he was dropped. But really, he has been there. He knows what it takes to be an ex international. Now, looking at the, the team, when, when it comes to Nigerian football, uh, under 17, under, although we'll be coming to that particular uh, topic, but right now, the way you guys play in 2001, can you say is see the same thing now? Looking at this set of players, I just won yesterday. You see, uh, Ade, football have, has changed a lot. Mm. The football the Eagles played in '94 is not the same pace and the same speed of football they are playing now. Football mm. have changed a lot. But every generation comes with its own style of football. So this generation, they are playing their own style of football. We can't criticize them for it. Either we can only praise them. But one thing for sure, the round object is being played the same thing right from the 70s till date. Now. Only that, maybe, maybe you can see the some styles, the guitar. The, yes, the, the, styles, <laughs> yeah. the styles are changing mm. gradually, unlike mm. before. Unlike before, one player can have the ball and dribble. dribble. Ten people without him, the team will be struggling. But now you can take anybody out and bring anybody in. He will give you the same result. Good one out there. Good one. Ibrahim Dalla has been talking to us, ex-international, who has been there. He has seen it all. So right now, we just have to talk about Golden Eaglet for what they did. Well, Charles, Golden Eaglet, before this journey, a lot of people were like, okay, we are always very good when it comes to the cadets uh, football in Nigeria. So people's expectations were actually high that they would do, and they've been giving us that expectation. They've been meeting, rather, the expectation that uh, we expect from them. And right now, uh, from the way it is, it seems Ubadi is really, uh, him too, as an ex-international, is really having the key to the heart of these boys. Yes, and yeah, thank you. Yes, 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 he, he, he's actually doing that. As I said, we, I spoke to him before during the, during the camp and um, his expectation was, all he was begging for was support. 
from Nigerians who should support the team, believe in them, give them the whole welfare packages they need for the team to to excel. And Ndoko Gbade has been able to bring that his winning mentality into this boy. He has been able to bring the winning mentality into this team. That winning mentality, because the truth is this, if you're not a winner, you, 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 don't, you, you will not be able to translate that same to your team. They were able to bring that winning mentality he had, the first edition of the under-17. And, of course, the boys look at him and say, wow, this is Nduka Ogbadi, an ex that won the first uh, captain, the first person to captain and win the cup. And we are privileged to play under Nduka Ogbadi. So the boys want to die for him. They want to play for him. They, want to, they also want to be like him. They want to make glory the way he has done. So, practically, Nduka Ogbadi, his technical crew, you see, there's one thing about Nduka Ogbadi. He has been able to carry all his technical team. He has been able to carry them along. The last time I spoke to some of them, he carries them along. Before every training, he sits down with them for like 30 minutes. They sit together. They, they, they plan the training section. They talk together. He gives them room. And they all make their inputs. And, and, he doesn't, and then they come out and then he excludes the inputs. And he's excelling. You know, some coaches believe that, okay, I'm the chief coach here. Everything, I, I see everything. But in the football, as Ndala said, football has changed. You know, I'm coming from the 80s, one man can be a coach and sees everything. But going forward now, you need the input of every technical member of your team. You make all your backroom staff have to be carried along. And that's what Ndugo Gwadi has been able to do. That unity started from, from the head. So going downwards now, they continue that unity. In fact, when you see them and the boys, it, it's like their father. Hmm. That's the, he brought this father-son relationship with these young lads. And they all believe in him. They have confidence in him. They, they, they confide in him. They talk to him. You see, they play with him. And he, I mean, he talks to them. They play to instructions. Even though you see some of them still trying to play that Chinese football. See somebody, yesterday's match, somebody was facing the goalkeeper. He wants to turn and do acrobatic. I was like, ah! <laughs> my mom was like, I said, I think that's small. I said, he's still a child. Boy. Yeah, so he can still do that. But a ball he could easily hit, he wants to do. I said, I started laughing. I said, okay, that's how it is. That they shows that really, they are really sport, sport. Are really on that 17. They are on that, no. That and that's one thing. Still there. You see that, that's, and this that, sport. That, that, that is the advantage from some errors back. Hmm. Yeah, so and these boys are really under 17. You know, the worry he had initially was when, when the test, MRI test, dropped some players. They were even 17 years old. They were dropped. So I now asked him why. He said, yes, that craft said they are using a level 5. Before, they normally use level 3, level 4 MRI test. And of course, some other players can sneak into the team. But right now, it's totally, completely schoolboy team. And my, as I said before, it shows that in the next coming years, these boys can progress to the under 20, under 23, and we'll be sure to see like five, lot, six, seven of them, of them in the Super Eagles. Eagles. Mm -hmm. And once they're in Super Eagles, of course, you can imagine people being together for five years. The teamwork, the understanding will be there. And I tell you, the sky is the limit of this generation of Eagles. Hopefully, the sky will actually be the limit. We've been talking about the Golden Eagles for what they did. Two matches, two win for that team, and they've scored six goals, although they consider three so far. But they are edging closer to the trophy. They will be playing semi-finals and waiting to see if they can get through to the finals and at least scoop the competition, just like their senior colleagues did in the Flying Eagles. Well, good one for the Golden Eagle. We have Ibrahim Indala, an ex-international who also played under 17, under 20, under 23, and also he was uh, at least an invitee for the Super Eagles before he was dropped alongside Femi of Pabumi. But now let's go to the focus we have on the show, looking at age grade football in Nigeria. Now that's our focus. And quickly, let's look at that particular topic. Age grade football in Nigeria, you were there, you played the game. 2001, you say you play under 17. Majority of you graduated from that 17 to 20. Maybe if, you, if they have kept all of you together from that 17 to 20, as you said, Maybe you could have won the competition and wanted to win, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe. You don't go into any competition thinking you will just win it. But about the age group, mm. the good thing about uh, Nigerians today is most part of Nigerians today, young boys are allowed to go and play football, unlike those days. Those days, Every, fix your every, book, fix your yes, book. every parent <laughs> holds their kids back. So most of the time, it's most, in most situations, the older guys are the ones always fronting to be at hmm. age grade football. So I think this era has changed. Now you can see parents taking their kids. 
in expensive cars, taking them to field, hire coaches to coach them to play football, unlike before. And we have a I lot know, of academies I, now. Now, now with, 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 the, with, the, with, with the coming up of a lot of academies, coming up of under 15 competitions, under 13, not that in those days there is, there are, there, there are, there are all these competitions, but now it's more exposed and people understand people it. People are aware. Aware of it. Mm. So it's, it's a good one. And that makes us to start having at least the real young ones we want to see to play for all this cadet team. Now, when you play for Nigeria, then as at that time, and we know a lot of uh, issue of discipline is always there. Uh, can you say, from the one you've seen as a player and now that you are out as a player, uh, can you say it's still the same? Because it seems Nigeria seems to do well, we do well when it comes to this age grade uh, football, this kid football. You see, uh, I won't say discipline because you can't play, you can't, you can't be in a cadet team without you being dis dis disciplined. Mm. That is 100% fact about it. If you, are on, if you are not disciplined, you won't make it to that camp. You need to be 100%, 110% disciplined for you to be able to play for the cadet team. Where most people and most journalists tag in discipline is with the senior team. Because mm. for me, I call it tag. Why, why I call it tag? Simple. The football administrator will do something and when the player react, they say it's discipline. Mm. So, do I, something like what? Do, do something, okay. You owe, me, you owe me a match bonus, you refuse to give me my flight ticket back, I requested for it, you said I'm in discipline. Mm. The same thing with the club side of Nigeria. You owe players salary, you owe them sign off, they ask for it, you say they are in discipline. What's in discipline about it? Mm. Oga, you are owing me, pay me, you are in discipline. Why did you talk? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling so you. Okay. So okay. With the senior team, that's what most people outside talk in discipline. And that's why you see, they say we have a lot of indisciplined players, players, this player is stubborn, this player is that. When you, when you ask, why is the player stubborn? They will just tell you, eh, he demand for this, he demand for that. Oh God, now you're right, give up. Hmm. Has he worked for it? Yes, give him. Why holding it back? Okay, we are coming to you now, uh, Charles. Uh, age grade football in Nigeria, that's our focus. And uh, we've been looking at the fact that Nigeria normally we do so well. We fight, we've conquered the world several times when it comes to under 17, under 21. We see what the under 23 have gone, uh, done, winning gold at the Olympics and so far. What has been the secret that we win the unders? That when it comes to super egos, it's difficult. Yes, um, thank you. Um, I think for me, I think uh, one, one of the problems I look at, I think. Uh, is the interest, you know, from, from the underage, just as it is right now. A lot of Nigerians don't even know, most Nigerians don't, are not even aware that this they, they are playing waffle co competition. Co competition going so on. Nobody awareness is aware. number one. Number one is that it's not there. So you see, I see these boys are not distracted. There's no distraction to the, for these boys yet. Mm -hmm. It's fewer. So they are able to keep their head together, go in, and as they are going in, their mindset is they want Nigerians to know us. And for the way Nigerians can know you is until you win. The trophy. If you go for education gold, there are a lot of good squad that have gone for under 17, but because they did not win the gold medal, that set is completely forgetting or written off. In fact, even the set in Dallas belonged to 2001. They played the final with they played final with France. They won mm -hmm. silver, mm -hmm. but because they didn't win the gold, they won silver. If they have won gold, I'm very sure a lot of people will have you know, known them. So many they will have been everywhere, but because they won silver Absolutely. medal, yeah. So when they came back to Nigeria, Nigerians will celebrate that for you in that age level. But of course, but if it's in the senior level, wherever you get to celebrate. So I think the senior level right now, so many interests are coming in, and these players have grown. They have interest from their club side, from managers, from so many distractions. In fact, even even the team administrators want to sell players. So many, so many. So there's so many things coming. And these boys, when they go to Europe, especially when they go to Europe, they, they meet a, where a system is working. Mm -hmm. So when you are coming from where a system is working to where a system is not working, like in Nigeria football, definitely there's bound to be clashes of interest mm -hmm. in it. So they are not have issue. And without interest, you are distracted, you are not motivated, you don't want to give in your best because I know, okay, even if I die for this team and I get injured, what happens? 
Eti Mason is injured right now. They are, they, are, they are scouting around to see how they can even treat him. So all these are the things that most players look at and they, they just want to give 50% of themselves and reserve the rest for themselves and their family tomorrow. So it's just, it's just a, a problem that is a system problem that is a Nigerian problem that we are seeing how we can break it from the head downward. It's just a general problem in Nigeria in all organizations. Okay, now uh, Ibrahim Ondala, S International, who actually play for Nigeria, is here. We're talking football, age grade football, and this time around between a question. Now, uh, if you notice, a lot of people are always like, okay, if you can keep a team from 17 to 20, they perform very well to 23 or 21 rather, then to 23. And then if you keep them like that, they qualify to play for Eagles. It means the team should be able to do well because they know themselves. They've been playing together for years. But what is it, it's very common that after a tournament, if they don't, even if they win, the next group stage or rather age grade that is higher than, they will disband that team and will pick another set of players. But it doesn't happen in other countries. I still remember how Luis Figo and the entire squad that played, yeah. they kept them together. The same team that came to Nigeria so to play Nigeria, right? Brazil, they kept them together. And yeah. that was how they, they moved to the Olympics. Lionel Messi's team, as yes. at that time, they yeah. kept them together. And we saw what they've been doing. So how come that Nigeria, it doesn't happen here like that? Is it because we, are so, we have so many talent? Mm, I didn't know. Hmm. The simple truth is, how, how is the development of those players first? Mm. Yes, you played in under 17. In the next few years, what have you been doing? Have you been playing football? Some of them, some of them, immediately after under 17, maybe no club. Mm. You went trial abroad, no team that will sign you. 100% of them, maybe 40% have a team. If 40% have a team, maybe 10% are playing in top teams in Europe. Mm. So how, how do you expect them to grow together and come to under 20? Football is everyday development, right? If you have an under 17, what they, did, what they do in Europe, when they have a team under 17 that perform or did not perform, because most of those players are coming from a club side academies. Mm. Unlike these boys, unlike Nigeria, they are coming from a club side academies. They are coming from Barcelona, Real Madrid, Salta Vigo, Inter Milan, AC Milan. They are coming from all those academies. So they have a team they're playing with. They played in under 17. They go back to their team. Now they graduate from their team under 17 to under 20. They stay playing football. Some will get career threatening injury one or two we miss, they will come, 95% of the team. They are still together. They are still together. They keep performing so that they get invitation to under 20. Not that they are just inviting them because you've played in under 17. No, it's because you remain active and relevant, still playing football. Hmm. And that's when you see them together. You can see uh, during Argentina era, Messi, Di Maria, Tevez, Mascarano, they grew together. Why? Even they are from South America. It's because they have a team they're playing. Mikel Obi team. A Ravon coached that team from under 17. 17. And Siasia took over that team. At least that set of under 17. 70% of them make the team to 2005. On no two people because that under 17 team did not perform. In Finland. So nobody knows them until that. 2005 under 20. So that's the advantage. And they grew like that. How many of them? About nine of them came to Super Eagles. Hmm. Now, this era now, if you check this current Eagles, how many boys have played in Nigerian under 17? The current Super yes. Eagles. Yes. It's only Oshime and uh, Chikweze. Nacho. And maybe, and okay, and Nacho. Three. Ask what happened to the rest. Are they not playing football? They are. Are they playing in a better team than what Being invitation to the, to the Super Eagle? No. Hmm. 
good one out there. Ibrahim Dalla has been giving us the experience. He's gotten so far as a player and as an ex-player for the under-17, under-20, under-23. And before being get, given invitation to play for Super Eagle, although it was eventually a draw, but it has been an ex-international with experience. Good one to have you in the studio. We continue with this thank, in the evening. You, we have to talk about this age <laughs> <history. laughs> Seriously. Uh, seriously. Uh, you're actually taking us through those history and it, it's good because a lot of people seeing you now will be like, oh, Ibrahim Indala, that name I used to hear. That's yeah. him in the studio. Yeah. Charles <laughs> Haji has been here. Good one. Good to have you, Charles. Yes, thank you. We'll continue this in the evening. Okay, we'll continue. Just have to talk sure. about it. Well, it's been a wonderful time <laughs> talking age grade football in Nigeria and also Golden Eagles doing so well, winning against Togo over there in Cape Coast, Ghana. I am Adini Ajishafe. Thanks for watching. <laughs>